Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from narcissistic relationships. This is sort of a, a sort of super niche issue, which I know some of you have encountered. And it's so niche, but I still think you're going to say, Whoa. so have you ever had the narcissistic person say to you, I never said you couldn't do that. Let's unpack this. So this is a particularly nefarious dynamic that happens in the narcissistic relationship. It's one of those extensions of gaslighting, one of the many gaslighting satellites. So I'm, I think it's going to be easier for me to lay this out to you as a scenario. All right. So you live with a narcissistic person, probably a partner, maybe a roommate. Okay. You live with them and you have a group of friends you love and that you sometimes want to have them over or that sometimes just pop over just to say hi, or they even come over to help you with some stuff. Right. And over time, you get more huffing and puffing from the narcissistic partner. You're, it's not that your friends come over all the time. They come over a normal amount of time. And your narcissistic partner will be like, oh, really? Your friends again? It might even go farther and say, oh my gosh, you're so needy. Why do you always need them around here? Really? She's coming again? Like, what is it about her? Like, she's a nothing. Why are you friends with her? Maybe the narcissistic person maybe even goes further and makes them feel uncomfortable. They're not warm with them. They sort of rudely come into the room and grab their stuff and barely look up or greet people. Or they even literally say rude stuff. The narcissistic person says rude stuff to your friends like, oh, you again, hey. Or they come in bleary eyed as though they were woken up by everyone in the middle of the day. They may be abrupt with your friends. You get that vibe, right? Hold on to that for a second. Let's, let me just unpack another scenario. It could be you want to take a class or you want to do something that meets regularly for a little while, like, you know, once a week class. It may be at a time of day when you know everything is sort of covered in the household. And so you say, hey, I'm going to go take this class for a month or two, or I'm going to go do this thing. And they say, hey, yeah, no, cool. But that's the day I do sometimes work late because sometimes I have to work late. So do we have coverage for the kids? A sort of needling you. Okay, but like, what if someone has something happen that night? Or you do go to the class a few times and during the class you get 20 texts and it's disruptive or these last minute emergencies keep coming up, which make you late to the class or you miss it all together. And I have no doubt, I've given you two examples and I have no doubt that you can think of other examples from your own lives. Then what unfolds is that you stop inviting the friends over. Maybe you end up going to the friend's house more often or you go there to work on something that you traditionally did at your own place. Maybe you drop out of the class. The narcissistic person then may ask you, well, how come you're going to her house? Why are you going to your friend's house? Or why can't you do whatever it is you needed to do? Like, why aren't they coming and helping you over here? Or how come you're not going to your class anymore? And in some cases you may say, Dude, you told me you didn't want them around. You basically told me they couldn't come over. Or you may say to them, hey, oh my gosh, like I went four times. Like you basically told me I couldn't take the class. And folks, this is where it gets tricky because a narcissistic person is going to turn around and say, I never said that. I never said you couldn't have your friends over. I never said you couldn't take the class. And the shitty part is that from an almost legalistic standpoint, they're right. With their little dance they were doing, they never said, don't have your friends over. They never said, don't take the class. They just made it wretched. They hurt your friends. They made them uncomfortable. They hurt you. They put so many barriers in front of you that nothing worked. And if any of you are watching this and thinking, but you could set boundaries, Try again, wrong answer. That stuff doesn't work with narcissism. So that's not a thing. So it's not true. But this, unfortunately, let's be honest. They never said, don't have your friends over. And this is where we feel gaslighted by times 10. They didn't say it. I guess they implied it. But when it comes to fight time and everything feels like a court with them, right? It's true. They didn't say it. But the net result is the same. There was no comfortable way to have those friends over or take the class. So why bother? So if you were to say something to the narcissist, like you made us uncomfortable, you made it feel like I couldn't have them over. 
You made it so hard to go to class. They may hit back at you well, with, well, that's a you thing. I never said you couldn't go. You make me sound like I'm an ogre. I can see this camera. I can see you all nodding your heads at home. This is how the pernicious dynamic of isolation happens in these relationships. Narcissistic people will never make the people who support you feel comfortable or they will attempt to encroach on them and sort of poach or infiltrate your friends. But it happens so gradually and little by little, the idea of having friends over or even the sense of shame and embarrassment of having people over overtakes you. But the narcissistic person is often too clever. It is far more powerful through manipulation and a thousand invalidating behaviors for you to gradually be the one who modifies your own behavior to appease them and keep the peace. It feels awful because then you are in fact positioned as the decision maker. You're the one who decided not to have them over. And then you're positioned as the one who did this to yourself by the narcissistic person. I never said they couldn't come here. You're the one who stopped having them over. But here is where it gets more effed up. As you heal and think, okay, well, I can't have them over here, so I want them in my life, so I'll go over there, that's when the narcissistic person will mess with you again. Control is such a key dynamic in narcissistic relationships that then they're going to wonder, well, how come you're always leaving? Why are you always going to their house? And of course, that means you're not in their service and you're not a convenient source of supply. Now, with the example I gave of doing something like taking a class, again, it's very similar. They may, with their victimized narrative or the barriers of, or it, they set forth, or even playing on things that matter to you. For example, you wouldn't want your children to not have your support ahead of an important school thing, like a test they might need help studying for, that you may find then you can't really participate in the class in a meaningful way. If you had a healthy partner, you could have, but not in this case. So not only are you not getting the true benefit of the class, if you do keep trying to struggle to, to, to go to the class, you're taking the class in a way that isn't fully committed. And that may even contribute to an internal sense of failure or that you are the one who once again is not doing good enough because you couldn't do the work or whatever the class was asking you to do. And then you weren't getting everything out of it you could or performing well in the class. I don't think that this I never said you couldn't trick is only limited to narcissism. Passive aggressive people love it too. It's an entitled misery making that plays on other people's willingness to accommodate and avoid conflict. And in many of these cases, the responsibility is put on the person who is enduring or experiencing the bad behavior, the you know, the, the person who's having to watch their friends be made miserable or the barriers being put in front of them to go to class. And we will often tell people in these situations, set boundaries, don't put up with it. But that's actually quite cruel because if you were to actually try to set boundaries, it would end up with more abuse and more manipulation. The tricky piece here is that, and, and this is where narcissistic people are so skilled in their manipulation is that narcissistic people are too smart in many cases, not all, but in many, to make what would seem like an unreasonable ask to your face. This is where you feel like you're being effed with in one of these relationships. It's a bit heavy handed to say your friends can't come over. That's something we might see in more of a severely coercive dynamic, for example, with a malignant narcissist, but not traditionally in most narcissistic relationships. They're not going to say things like, you cannot take the class. They know and they still find a way to get their needs met. They know what they want by having you do the dirty work, as it were. Dirty work, like telling the friends not to come over, that gets you to a calmer place or that you do things that, for example, like, like not have, like I said, not have the friends come over to keep the peace in the house for the kids, for yourself, for anyone else in the household, to protect your friends, to not just have the headache. Narcissistic relationships are a game of avoidance. And they may even say, when you say, you told me I can't have my friends here, that you're the one gaslighting them, which you aren't. But you may believe it and then go down the rabbit hole of, Maybe I'm the problem. 
maybe I'm the narcissist. Anyhow, the I never said you couldn't is the whole tricky space of saying versus saying. And this capacity of people with these personality styles to do things but do them in a way that's just under the radar adds to the stress, the frustration, the anger, the confusion, the self-blame, the isolation, and the general awfulness of these relationships. If you have experienced this dynamic, I guess my only hope is that this video helped you feel a little more sane. Communication isn't always directly what comes out of our mouth. In the sort of legalistic culture we live in, we often come down, you never said that, you never wrote it down. We can say a thousand things through our many other behaviors we do around us. For example, making people you might have over to help you feel deeply uncomfortable. Over time, any sane person wouldn't invite those friends over, wouldn't put their friends through that, wouldn't put yourself through it. And this also, folks, is how you get cut out of the key, one of the key healing tools, which is support. Pay attention to this dynamic and always remember the key mantra of the narcissistic relationship, you can't win. Thanks again.